Hi, a very good afternoon to everyone. A warm welcome to Noel and Avenue Hospital's Facebook Live event, Quality Care for Every Child. My name is Melissa and I will be your host and moderator for today's Facebook Live event, answering questions on pediatric care and parent craft. Before we kickstart today's session, I would like to say a big thank you to Mount Alvernia Hospital for organizing this event together with Kinder Clinic and Parent Craft Department of Mount A. We are also very glad to have Meet Johnson Nutrition as our event sponsor. So first, let me introduce myself and the speakers that we have for this afternoon's event. My name is Melissa and some of you might know me as Melissa Seco on Instagram. I am a content creator and an entrepreneur. So our first speaker that we have coming on board is Dr. Terence Tan. Dr. Tan is a consultant pediatrician and neonatologist with Kinder Clinic based in Mount A. He has been practicing at Mount A for more than 20 years and has four children who are growing up really quickly. In addition to his interest in PD medicine, he is also interested in issues like parenting and bringing up children. So you are definitely speaking to someone who's very passionate about all the issues that we're discussing today. He's very happy to be here and to meet everyone online. Our next speaker for the event will be Rita Francis. She is currently working as a senior parent craft counselor, um, lactation consultant in Mount A, and she's a state registered nurse and midwife, and she has been there for 22 years since 1999. She's also a certified IAIM infant massage instructor, and her daily work is to conduct childbirth education to parents, to be and to assist new mothers to achieve successful breastfeeding and quality care for babies. So before we jump right into it, I know many parents have a lot of questions for our speakers today. Um, we shall first um, get to questions regarding um, the general health care of children, um, of immunization, and of, of course, well-being of babies and toddlers. So the first few questions that we have are for Dr. Terence Tan. Um, I think this is a very common question that most people want to know and want to ask. So, you know, babies are, are supposed to be scheduled for um, their, their vaccinations. At what age should they be vaccinated? Is there a schedule for it? Um, are the vaccinations safe? And the most important, will there be side effects um, for, from these vaccinations? And what are these side effects that we should look out for? Well, the broad principle, thank you for having me, first of all. So the broad, broad principle of vaccines for children is this. Because babies and young children are vulnerable to, to old enemies and some not so old enemies. Um, so the, the role of the vaccines is to protect our kids from many of these conditions. diarrhea, uh, whooping cough, measles, hepatitis B. So, so the, the principle is always to give the vaccines in a timely way because some of these diseases tend to attack at a certain age. Some, some tend to attack when they're very young. So these vaccines tend to be important when they're young. Um, other, other infections tend to attack when they're older. So the vaccines are given around about the time when they need it. And there are also some considerations. For example, certain vaccines are more effective when they're younger. Certain vaccines are only more effective when they're older, when the immune systems are more mature. So the schedule, uh, as as um, outlined by our National Childhood Immunization Schedule, or NCIS, is prescribed a list of vaccines given to our kids born in Singapore um, from birth all the way to about 18 to 24 months. Now, every country has its own kind of list, and many countries, there's a great degree of overlap because many of these conditions are similar between the uh, children of, 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 different, of between different countries. Nonetheless, there are some, some um, uh, uh, particular peculiarities in certain countries. Um, whether they're safe or not, it's actually a very important consideration for kids because we are giving um, vaccines, basically we're giving something for kids who are otherwise well. And certainly we do not want the kids to suffer from major side effects. So by and large, most of these vaccines have been used for decades now. So the routine vaccines are now generally thought to be very safe. And we must remember that although nothing is absolutely 100% safe, we always weigh against um, the risk of not getting a vaccine and getting the disease instead. So all parents are actually kind of are good, it's good to think through when, when giving consent to vaccines. But by and large, the, the medical community feels that it's always safer to vaccinate our kids. 
are there any common side effects you know that we should look out for because i mean after getting the vaccination even personally when you know no one goes for a vaccination i tend to look out for like i don't know fever or any other mm. side effects would, would there be any um that are like things that parents can can take note and and kind of preempt yes certainly every vaccine is slightly different uh, the commonest side effects will be things like fever some irritability some soreness in the injection sites and different vaccines have different severities some have more fever in more in terms of fever and some have less and some of the vaccines don't hardly ever give any side effects at all by and large and they're also grouped into my major and minor side effects major meaning more serious but thankfully less common side effects and minor often are more common but also less severe side effects so by and large before every vaccine is given the doctor or the nurse giving the vaccine uh, will outline to the parents what particular side effects to watch out for but by and large commonly most common it will be the fever and some soreness in the injection site okay another question for you dr tan um when should parents schedule their first appointment you know with the doctor well that's that's a great question but uh, most of the time whether you're born in, in a public or, uh, or private hospital in singapore uh, the babies have contact with the, with the doctors and the nurses already at birth. So the first contact already happens um, uh, when, when babies are born. Um, usually, we will want to see the babies in the outpatient clinic at about end of the first week of life. That's when a few things happen, when we have to be sure the jaundice isn't too high, um, mm. when, um, we have to make sure the baby is gaining weight, Mm. And that's when most parents also run into a bit of trouble managing the babies, you know, various things that happen. So usually by the end of the first week is the first visit. Okay, thank you. I think um, a very common concern, especially for parents, would be um, sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. It, at what age is that um, a really high risk? And, and what are some things that, you know, we can do to prevent it or, you know, to, 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 to avoid it, of course? Uh, that's a good question too. Um, since it's very frightening, especially with those of us who have kids, we are worried that um, something very unfortunate or very unforeseen may happen suddenly. You know, so there are some risk factors, and um, I think the major risk factor over the years um, is that um, it's since it's statistically related to prone sleeping position, which means sleeping on the tummy. So we don't really understand medical fertility doesn't really understand why that is. But we know that it's linked and because mm. of that for worldwide we are all pediatricians all nurses have been telling the parents to put the babies back on their backs to sleep or it's probably the term as the back to sleep program uh it's been and, and it and that back to sleep sort of strategy has brought the incidence of sits down to a very much lower rate than previously there's also somehow um the lower incidence of sits in the in the far east and in the west we don't we also don't understand why that happens mm. but nonetheless the recommendation for sleeping on the back um is for is for everyone so we that's the first thing the other thing that sometimes we tell parents um to reduce the risk of sits is to be very careful when baby is, is, is cold sleeping with the parents in the same day because there have been there, there is data to show that cold sleeping increases the risk of sits there are the things that make it safer but by and large you have to be aware that that increases the risk a little bit Okay, thank you. I think that that is also a very um, insightful um, um, thing to note about cold sleeping because I think many parents, um, even myself personally, enjoy the convenience of cold sleeping. I co-sleep with Noah, but 